So one of the more important things we can do with calculus is to graph functions. Now this might seem to be a little bit of an archaic throwback. After all, do we not have graphing calculators and computer algebra systems? And the answer is, well, yes, actually we do. But one problem is that these are computers and they will only show us what we ask them to show us. For example, consider the graph of y equals x to the fourth e to the minus x. Now I can enter this into a graphing calculator and it will produce a graph but not necessarily a graph that's useful. So it might produce a graph that looks like this. And the problem is I don't know whether this graph includes all of the important features of the function. In particular, there may be features of this graph that aren't shown here. So maybe I'll zoom out and take a bigger picture. Except now all of my important details have been crushed down to nothing at the center of the graph. So this graph isn't useful either. So let's try and use calculus to figure out what interval we should look at. Now the things we've looked at are critical points and inflection points, so let's go ahead and find those, and then we'll construct an interval that includes all of these points. So first, let's find the critical points. We'll differentiate our function. Looking ahead, it'll turn out to be easiest if we factor these at least partially. And both terms have an e to the minus x, so let's remove that common factor. The critical points are going to be where the derivative does not exist, or where the derivative is equal to zero. Since e to the minus x, x to the fourth, and x cubed are defined everywhere, then the only critical points are going to be the solutions to derivative equal to zero. Remember, the reason why factoring is useful is that if a product of two things is zero, we know one of them has to be zero. But in this case, we know that e to the minus x can never be zero. So the only critical points are going to be the solutions to minus x to the fourth plus 4x cubed equals zero. So again, we'll try to factor by identifying a common factor to all the terms. And we can remove a factor of x cubed. And again, we have product equal to zero, so we know that one of the two factors has to be zero. And so that gives us critical points at x equals zero and x equals four. To find the inflection points in the concavity, we'll take the second derivative. And here's where that partial factorization is useful because now our first derivative is a product and so we can apply the product rule And again, looking ahead, it doesn't hurt to do some partial factorization here. Both of these terms have a factor of e to the minus x that we can remove, and we get our partially factored form of the second derivative. Now, we want to find the inflection points, and that's going to be where our concavity changes. But remember that if our second derivative is positive, the graph is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, the graph is concave down. What that means is that the inflection points must be where our second derivative is either zero or undefined. And once again, e to the minus x and polynomials are defined everywhere, so our second derivative will never be undefined. So let's look for where it is equal to zero. So we've found the second derivative as a product of two things. So if we want it to be equal to zero, we need one of the factors to be zero either e to the minus x is zero, which is impossible, or the other factor is zero. And again, let's factor. And now I have a product of two things equal to zero, so either x equals zero or this second factor equals zero. Now, this is a quadratic equation, and in a kind and gentle universe, every quadratic equation has integer solutions. We do not live in that universe, so we'll use the quadratic formula. Okay, so every now and then we get lucky, and we do have a quadratic with integer solutions. And so we have our derivatives in factored form. We have the places where the first derivative is zero. We have the places where the second derivative is zero. So now let's fill in the signs at all the other locations. If x is less than zero, 
then in the derivative e to the minus x is positive and minus x to the fourth plus 4x four cubed is negative so the derivative will be the product of a positive and a negative it'll be negative and we'll make a note of that on our sign chart meanwhile if x is less than zero our second derivative will be a product of a positive number and a positive number so the second derivative will be positive similarly if we're between zero and two e to the minus x is positive and minus x to the fourth plus 4x four cubed is also going to be positive so the derivative is positive and in this way we can find the sign of the derivative and the second derivative in between the critical points now based on this we see that the graph is falling until we reach x equals 0 and rising after so a local minimum occurs at x equals 0 the graph continues to rise until x equals 4 and then falls afterward so a local maximum occurs at x equals 4 likewise we see that the graph is concave up until x equals 0 and concave up afterwards so no change in concavity occurs at x equals 0 but it does switch to being concave down at x equals 2 and then switches back to being concave up at x equals 6 so we have an inflection point at x equals 2 and x equals 6 so all of the interesting behavior of this graph is going to occur at x equals 0 x equals 4 x equals 2 and x equals 6 so any interval that includes 0 4 2 and 6 will be good for graphing so a suitable interval for graphing might be the interval between minus 1 and 7 and if we do that our graph looks like this